Okay, this was the final game in the chess tournament over the board. And playing as white against a 1431. This player was more of the mature um, type of person. So straight away, I immediately said to myself, I'm going to have to do this the old fashioned way. I'll have to play this game how I used to play right at the very beginning. I'm going to have to stonewall this. I'm going to have to inch it up a little bit at a time. I'm going to have to use the power of the pawns. Just based on looking at the player. I have seen them play before. And they kind of just sit back and wait for you to overextend. And they'll just inch a few pawns. And I'm like thinking, this is the last game. My car's parked in a place that really it shouldn't be parked in, but it's free. So I'm just fingers crossed that it doesn't get clamped or I don't get a ticket. So I'm panicking. I'm wanting to get this game over and done with. But now I'm, I'm looking at the player. I'm thinking, oh, this is going to take ages with the Stonewall. Anyway, I push through with Stonewall mentality just locking everything down and you know I cannot stand playing like that but in order to progress in chess I have to be a chameleon and I have to try and blend in with opponents playing styles so I push through with the e4 as we do develop the knight and immediately I saw him inch I've seen him inching earlier in his other games and I thought oh my god that is so dry damn it and now I'm having to face it too. But because I used to play like that, it didn't phase me. So I brought the bishop through, nice and small, and just inched the pawn up nice and steadily. Because he's brought his bishop out, he's looking to attack the area. And then we castle, so king safety. And then bring the bishop out, really just putting a bit of pressure on the queen, but really not doing much there. So then bringing the bishop back, wasn't looking at opening any spaces for them. That's what they want me to do. And I'm like going, no, and I've seen you play. I know your style, um, Stonewall it is. So we push the pawn up now, just there defending the area, blocking off the bishop. So when I'm talking Stonewall, it's more a case of just blocking stuff off with pawns and using the power of the pawns rather than the power of the minor pieces and ma you know major pieces until later on in the game so they bring their knight out and we start pushing through the center with the pawn and at that point i just thought well there's nothing going here yeah he's waiting for me to extend he's, there's nothing actually happening so we've defended ourselves quite nicely so now it's lazy man's time so i'm just pushing the, the a pawn up so he pushes his down to block off and we bring the bishop up here. The reason I brought that up was just so that to entice again his pawn to come down and block his own bishop in that way, which they do. And we just bring the bishop back looking to entice more pawns either this way or this way to attack, to get him doing something. You know, I'm trying to draw him out of this ooh, stonewally looking thing. Okay, so he pushes down with his pawn and uh, just bring my bishop back again because it's done its job. Didn't want to leave it there too long because we, we need maybe need to get this pawn activated if we're looking to blast through here some at some point. So they bring their rook across. So we, we bring our pawn up looking to maybe try and open up or just locking down. Like we said, we will focus more on the lockdown process, but we're willing to go for pawn breaks if it was necessary. So they push down and I'm stonewalling, I'm, I'm locking it down, I'm not interested in taking. And then he took, I thought that is it, I can go for a draw here quite nicely and go and get my car out of this, um, um, not unsavoury place but I just don't want to get a ticket. And there, so I was really surprised he took, you know, because his style is just so stonewalling. When he did actually capture, he did sort of make a noise like he was a bit annoyed that he had to actually capture. So the, he brought his rook through here and at that point I thought to myself, well, he's not going to extend any further through. Uh, my next move, I'm going to offer a draw. If he wants to take the draw, then so be, if he doesn't, then I'm willing to 
play on and I think I'm slightly in advantage uh, with the ownership of the file and the placement of my pieces uh, so if he doesn't want to take the draw, I'll gladly play on, but I think we will probably gain an advantage. That's not being cocky or anything, it was just looking at the position of the pieces and the actual ownership of the file and the elevation of our pawns on this far side here. So as I brought my rook across, I got up out of my chair and um, I said I offer a draw and I don't think he heard me the first time and I was just about to go for a walk and then was that a draw he said and i said yes and he threw out his hand dead quick <laughs> so we agreed a draw and that's how the game ended and that's the that was the end of the tournament so all in all i actually i actually exceeded the 50 50 mark um by half a point so the 50 50 man is no longer uh, well in this competition but if you compare the actual training games that we played to before the actual competition, we actually played five games um, in the tour real tournament. Um, we had a buy in the first one, so that gave us a 0.5. So we actually only played four games. So out of those four games, we had one loss, one win, another win, so that's two wins, and a draw. So if you have a look at the first games that we first game that we played in the training, uh, we had one loss, and then you could say then three three wins. So it was almost there or thereabouts. The actual training, um, we're down by half a point in the reality because we got the draw. So that's not too bad. I, I like it when things balance out like that. Um, like before we said well we'd prefer to lose in the training matches because then at least it might bode well for us in the OTB give us something to aim for but I'm quite pleased that it's only 0.5 down from the training so we'll keep on doing that type of stuff and I haven't got any more competitions lined up and um, there are a few league not league yeah league matches that I'm going to be taking part in but they're just odd bits here and there so I'm really quite happy with what we've done so far with the development that we've um, created with the mantra, the answer process and then being able to put it into play from 2000 and what is it, 18, 19 uh, when we were looking to start developing our, our chess and then it stopped and now we're starting back again and it's really good to go into a rated competition like this and actually um, show improvements so our particular rating um, should be going up a little bit um, based on our performance I've not done my own tally yet I've got to put it into my own spreadsheet and then I'll work out what I think potentially where I'm at at the moment but for a first competitive first rated competition uh, really really pleased but I'm really pleased about playing in the unrated um, tournament as well prior to this because that gave me loads of pointers that I needed to work on in my current state in the OTB side. So yeah, definitely it, it was definitely worth it because it is a different ball game playing online and playing um, over the board. Had a few conversations with people in the um, tournament and again, same things were said really, um, more consistently around the difference between the two. Um, that a lot of high rated players online you know oh I'm 1800 1900 or I'm 2000 on, on, on you know chess.com and all that type of stuff um, but they're only like 1100 or 1200 on OTB and they were struggling in the tournament you know so there's massive differences so I'm really happy I, I can't wait to see what happens throughout the rest of the year obviously there's going to be ups and downs don't be thinking that just because I chitter chatter chitter chatter um, that I think I'm some master. I do not. I keep saying that because somehow I think like I must sound like I'm I'm a big know-it-all or something of chess. I am no. I'm not at all. I'm low level. Thirteen oh eight. Two thousand and something. Look at the gap there. That's like seven hundred points. So I have a long way to go. But that doesn't mean that what I have to say is not any good think about that